Thank you for joining us to watch the next in the series that we are offering with information for men that are receiving hormone treatment for prostate cancer. I am Louise Field from Adore Your Pelvic Floor, and I'm joined by the wonderful Debbie Dillon, who is a women's and men's pelvic health physio specialist, and she has a special interest in men's health. In fact, Debbie, you are involved in a pilot scheme for prehabilitation for pre-radiotherapy treatment for prostate cancer. And to add to that, Debbie, you've got a diploma in psychosexual medicine, which actually means that you are the perfect expert that we have for today's session, which is, let's talk about sex. So Debbie, over to you, my darling. I do have some questions. And the very first question I would like to ask is, how can prostate cancer affect your sex life? Firstly, Louise, thank you so much for um, asking me to come and do this with you. As you know, it's a, a passionate subject and what we deal with in our everyday clinics. So great to be with you. Um, and as always, this is a fantastic resource for the men. So absolutely fantastic for getting all of this together. Thank you again and for all our men. So you asked, how can prostate cancer affect um, the men's sex life? So, you know, take away all the drugs and, you know, everything else about it. You know, mind, body, that all affects our, how our sex and how everything happens. So, you know, if somebody's got um, anxiety to do with the diagnosis, you know, that's definitely going to be on their mind. They're not really going to feel like they're really going to want to, you know, um, be in intimate with their partners or, and even if they have a partner. Um, the hormone therapy can affect their desire. Um, that in turn can affect relationships. Um, coping with cancer can affect um, a current relationship or if somebody was starting a new relationship. So these are kind of the bigger holistic picture as well as culturally, um, you know, we don't know their previous um, experiences, you know, so you all of those different things, yeah, can initially, you know, kind of be part of the bigger picture. Right, so how do the hormones actually affect sex? So coming to the more physical side, yeah. so what the hormone therapy does is it stops the hormone testosterone from reaching the cancer cells because that then stops the growth of the prostatic tissue. Okay, so that's their, that, that's what this androgen therapy does, the hormone therapy. So as a result of lowering in testosterone um, and trying to actually get rid of testosterone, men can find that their penises can become shorter, their testicles can also get smaller because, you know, they've no testosterone. As a result, result of that, again, um, they lose the desire, like I said earlier. So, you know, that's a big impact. Um, they can have erection issues. And don't forget, a lot of these men might have had erection issues pre-diagnosis anyway. So, you know, you take away the testosterone, that's another tenfold in there. Um, or orgasms may be less intense. They might have no orgasms um, and they may produce less semen or what you might hear also the term banded around is a dry orgasm. Um, changes to the body then will change how you feel about sex. Um, weight gain. You know, because what happens is they lose, um, you know, they put on weight because the testosterone has docked off. They also can lose muscle mass. So that can turn in, into kind of more fat. So they're just image um, hot flushes. You know, all of these things can affect how the whole thing of sex feels like for the men. So, you know, it really can change the whole lot. And and the difference is, and, you know, women expect to go through a menopause. Men don't expect to kind of have hormone issues really um so and, and psychologically it can be huge yeah because i done a symptom checker with a gentleman friend of mine and he ticked so many as you say from the symptom checker for the menopause and it and yet actually men aren't getting they're not look, they're not getting the, the help that women are and so as he had ticked off everything that was in there it was all those things that actually you, you lose your desire for yeah. intimate relations and, and they it can prove how intimate relations can be more problematic for stuff and that's why I think it's so important we have this this session today yeah. with you it is really I mean it is and, and I'll be bringing that up later I mean it is just you can't stress enough and it's quite interesting I've been seeing a few post-treatment uh, gentlemen um, recently, 
And the first thing they've all said, so they're, they're seeing me because I've got pelvic floor issues, whether it's, you know, erectile dysfunction, pelvic floor bowels, you know, or a urinary or bowels. And all of them have said they wish, one, that they had seen somebody like us who would talk about it to them. And, and two, is having that pre-treatment. And the third thing, which a few of the gentlemen have also said, is actually tell people they could easily survive the cancer but it's actually the side effects of all the treatments is what makes it really hard to live with. Mm. And, the, and it was really interesting. And you were just saying, wow, yeah, that's, that actually is, is quite profound and intense to hear from somebody, you know, that it actually is your quality of life afterwards. And so hopefully some of what we might say today might give some of the gentlemen the tools to actually go on ahead and see, can these things help their quality of life? Yeah, which is the whole reason for these videos, um, yeah. the whole series, you know, with the nutrition support, fitness support, um, etc. Um, so are there any lifestyle changes that gentlemen can use to help here with yeah, so, sex and intimacy? So we discussed about the effects of the hormone treatment. So, you know, typical putting on the weight. Um, so a healthy weight. And that's in every single piece of research you pick up every single guideline you pick up the biggest things are healthy weight um, and activity they are the two that seem to just keep coming up again and what's really good to see is psychological um, kind of health and well-being as well and they seem to be the ones that keep coming up again and again um, to help with everything and so healthy weight, and I know the nutrition has spoken, you know, kind of all about it, but I, I'm just reiterating it once again. If you reduce the weight, you will be physically more able um, and helping if you are, you know, if we're trying to get you back or you're using any medication to help with gaining erection, all of that is even going to help even more. So keeping that weight, also it's going to prevent reoccurrence, hopefully. Um, hand in hand with weight, physical activity and fitness. And it, it doesn't mean you have to go off and do a triathlon, you know, or a marathon or climb a mountain. You can do all of those if you want to. But the simplest thing, walking, you know, walking, just starting by that, you know, and that's really important. So a lovely gentleman yesterday who was there with his walking stick, but he's increasing it all every week by week, you know, and that's incredible. And it's those simple things. And, you know, I think we need to i think and especially in your industry louise and you're fabulous and i think we need we're doing a lot with the women we now need to start on the men and really focusing on getting them fit and healthy and i think the same in the physio world i think any physio you know people are coming in with a muscle ache start getting them to go well actually do you know what you need to exercise because these you know this is going to help you no matter what past history you've had and so getting physical um, activity and fitness would be really important and as a result of that, that's going to also reduce the risk of some of the health issues such as fatigue. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need to be, you know, if you want to be have penetrative intimacy and you're able to, you need to be, you know, and not have too much fatigue. And um, the other side effects of treatment, which um, exercise help with lifting your mood, which then will help you be more in the mood for sex. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, if you're worried or you have issues with your bone health, which I forgot to say about the testosterone as well, can affect your bones. Mm -hmm. And so by keeping everything fit and able, then that's going to make you fitter to be more intimate and just be more confident in your own body and also with the muscle loss. Um, last but not least, pelvic floor exercises, which I know we're going to speak about in another. I won't go into all of that now, but getting that pelvic floor up and running can really help increase that blood flow to that area and just coincide with everything else that you'll be doing to help um, for any intimacy. Mm, that, that's, that's really, 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 really useful information there, Devi. thank you. What about support? Where can gentlemen find support? Well, I think the first thing to say is there's no right or wrong way to deal with all the changes to your sex life. Everybody's unique and everybody's different. Um, I know I've harped on about kind of more penetrative sex, but actually, unfortunately, it's the one thing everybody presumes when we say sex, it's penetration. But actually, there's a lot, there's a lot more to sex. It's intimacy and everything. So I think going back to your question, make sure, first of all, whatever's right for you, you do. It doesn't matter if everybody's saying you have to, you know, are you being sexually active and you don't want to be? That's your choice, you know, but just to be aware there is treatment available. 
okay knowing about those treatments so i think that's where we're very you know when a men a gentleman gets their diagnosis some think initially oh my god my sex life some that is the last thing in their mind they don't even want to they want to make sure everything else is okay am i going to be okay am i going to be around you know all the different things all the stages they'll go through you know they're scared of continence and so i think it's really good to sow the seeds and so hopefully <laughs> somebody might discuss some treatments um and you know discuss on what these treatments are but i think that's the other thing it can be difficult to talk about sex on the other side and not everyone is used to talking about it, including health professionals. And there's some research done that only 10% of health professionals will actually ask you about sexual function or you have the ones of, oh, have you any erectile dysfunction issues? No, okay, that's all right, next question. <laughs> and so, you know, don't feel embarrassed. You know, it is very hard, very easy for me to say, don't get embarrassed, especially when the health professional is. But if you didn't feel you'd like talking about it with that person and you preferred speaking it with the other health professional you see, you know, that's fine. Make sure and bring it up with them. And I think by us sowing that seed in whatever way we're working, very often, you know, it lets them have a think about it and go, well, actually, just for example, myself, Debbie was quite happy to talk about this subject, you know, bring it up with Debbie. And um, she might have a chat about it with me when I'm ready. And so that's why I think it's so important for us to bring it up and support them um, but equally for the gentleman to look for that support if they're not getting it because I know they don't and actually fascinating enough and doing this pre um, hab pilot I've learned how amazing some of the radiotherapy departments are at bringing up these issues which is amazing um, and I think that you know they're ahead in a lot of this compared to other professionals um, don't put off talking about it um, to professionals as I've said already but also to your other halves you know other you know your partner you know uh, because that's really important or if you're in a new relationship or looking for a new relationship you know don't put that off um you you know you can talk about other forms of intimacy you know kisses cuddles you know it's not all about penetration you know what did we all miss in lockdown a hug right we all got sick of all the hugs from family that was like okay we've had enough <laughs> i'll keep taking them but we all missed that tactile thing what what did we all miss we all miss face to face you know so all of those things we are human beings when we come back to basics that's what we like mm. so making sure to speak about that you know and, and kind of you know there's that's all really healthy and very good and that's intimacy and keeping up those um you know, and no, so with some of the, um, so with some of the professionals, as I said, you know, just keep taking it up, even if you feel you're hitting off, a, a, you know, a, you know, what's the wall, a, a wall, you're hit, hitting your head off a wall, just keep on bringing it up and just try different professionals, because you will get there if unfortunately you haven't been asked, it might be the GP you like, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, the other thing is you could ask so if you're not really getting anywhere there are is erection dysfunction uh, erection dysfunction clinics so very often just um ed clinics they'll be called um and you could get referred to them um mm -hmm. where they that's what they discuss um and if you're having struggles with regards to your partner and you've totally just i can't even go anywhere there and it's really getting you and affecting you in in so many different ways there is psychosexual counselors um, and they can be found as well. Obviously, always make sure people are registered. You know, there yeah. is some in the NHS. Um, like everything, it's busy. Um, but there's, a, you know, so there is that feasibility as well. Okay. Okay. So you could just look those up on Google. I take it. Yeah. 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 So but I will. I will put a link with. I'll send that to you as well because there's okay. two different kind of ones. There's the the one I've trained with. I'm not totally qualified as a counsellor. Um, hopefully, when I take the exams in another year. Um, but that's the IPM, the Institute of Psychosexual Medicine, are you COSRA, but I have to double check, and they're registered professionals, and that's what you want to make sure you see, not just any counsellor, no. yeah, because um, they, they'll go through those reasons on that side and support you as well, and actually, sorry, some Macmillan or Prostate UK, they can have some amazing nurses on the other end of the phone as well, who are fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant, I'm going to write that down, and we will make sure that we have all of those links um, in the description yeah. 
so that you can hyperlink, it'll be hyperlinked, so you just better press it and get to where you need to get to. Um, so I'm writing those down now so I don't forget. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to um, lead on from the um, getting the best treatment or? or do you yeah, I think, so getting the best treatment. So don't expect too much, as I said, for the first, in, so with everything, but when it comes to actually the, the physical side of treatment, so the tablets, the gels, the injections, the pumps, don't expect too much the first few times because people think, oh, here's the Viagra or here's the Salax. Sal sal oh, I can't even think of it now. Anyway, um, the first few times you try it, that might be one, it might be the right treatment for you, but sometimes it takes a bit of time, like anything. Um, it just can take time to get used to it, as I said, but and don't pressurize yourself. That is really important because, like everything, if you have to perform anything and you pressurize and pressurize, then it's a disaster. You know, so don't pressurize yourself. Don't give up. Keep with it. It might be the wrong treatment for you. You may need to try a few different treatments um, or sometimes even a combination of treatments. It all depends on what journey you're at. OK, um, how well each treatment works. Also, it depends on, as I said at the very start, whether you actually were able to get an erection and how your erections were pre any diagnosis. Um, there's a big figure that, every, you know, that is statistic that every, is it 10 years, there's another 10% of men with erectile dysfunction from the age of 40. I think it's something like 40% of 40s have one episode, goes up to 50 and, and so on. So that's quite high, really, you know, and then so that's really important to take all of that in because people just think, oh, well, this is now since I've been diagnosed. Yeah. OK. And so we have to be sensible. And a lot of our prostate cancer men are kind of over 60s, really, if not even over 70s. Um, you know, I'm not saying that means they're not having intimacy or, or, or penetration, but just to be, you know, you might have had issues before. So obviously we're not going to sort all of that out. No, no, that, that, that's really, really useful to know. Um, what types of treatment would you recommend? So we have pumps. Um, and they're used to kind of maintain that erection. So when we have, when we, when men have an enormous erection, um, they have kind of housekeeping erections to keep that blood flow to the penis so that whenever they want to be sexually active, everything is fine. And so they have so many erections every 24 hours to keep everything healthy. And obviously that changes as one gets older. So pumps are basically doing a false erection you have tablets, but actually with hormone therapy, tablets aren't usually one of the best forms of treatment. You have injections and um, you can have a pessary um, that goes into kind of the top of the penis and you also can have creams. OK, and so they're the kind of different ones or it's kind of more like a not like a pessary, it's more like a pellet than a pessary that goes into the top. So it's a huge range of different types of treatment. And so that's why, as I said earlier, it might be, you know, just one treatment. Somebody might put you on a, a tablet not working. Well, actually, if you're on androgen therapy, it's not going to be the best one for you. Yeah, you know? that, that's really highlighted to me about, as you say, if something doesn't work, try something else. Yeah. So maybe that combination. Yeah. Um, and that's really useful, Debbie, because the thing is, is, we don't always think of that until somebody mentions it like yourself. So I really think yeah, that's such a useful piece of information of um, yeah. there. That, that's really good. Um, fitting treatments into your sex life. Ugh. I know. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very much in this talk trying to help you on all the sides of prostate cancers rather than the whole, you know, going into the whole psychological side and, and kind of a bit of everything. But Oh, you know, these treatments, a lot of the men go, but they're so artificial, you know, as they're starting out and they are, you know, face it, they are artificial. But actually, <laughs> you know, a lot of people nowadays, younger generation are so busy, they're barely having any intimacy and they're having to diarize it, you know, and going, actually, Thursday night is date night and maybe we get lucky. <laughs> so in, maybe it becomes your di new diary, you know, and it's kind of OK. Thursday night, we've nothing on, let's have a bit of fun um, and see what happens. So, you know, you can, you, you, you know, just starting to think of more timing, obviously, because you'll need that bit of help. Um, you, it just takes time because you can, you can lose that momentum. You know, it's, it's, it's meant to be spontaneous. You know, intimacy is meant to be spontaneous. So a lot of it can be spontaneous, you know, 
but then obviously you have to go if you need to have your injection or the pump yeah. or whatever you need yeah and so just hang in there because it takes time so it might be that actually you start getting used to it and masturbating or any you know and you get used to it yourself and then bring in more the intimacy with it um and that's one thing that the gentlemen do say who i see kind of down the line they say you know oh my gosh initially but actually they were so strongly about i want to get back and have intimacy and if i can use it i am um and they found eventually they got used to it you can also bring in your partner to help you know if you are using creams to massage in that cream you could have other massage going on you know so there is other ways to be involved and be open because if you're kind of one second i'll be back in a minute <laughs> and secretive that's just going to put up another barrier mm. yeah communication and and being as open as possible which is actually hard sometimes extremely hard <laughs> you know um and people don't like to talk about sex and actually i mean i can go into that now i was talking i, I was going to bring up intimacy and so intimacy, uh, uh, my favorite thing when I do any more on the kind of whole, let's talk about sex. And I do an awful lot actually now for pal with palliative care. And so the first thing I always say, it's not just penetration. Yeah. And so the other thing I always say, communication. <laughs> and so it's so important in any relationship. I mean, you go to any business, you go to any um, team meeting. What's the biggest thing we all need to do is communicate. You need the after of communication, you know, you need you need everything and it all works around communication. And so, you know, whether you have cancer or not on a sex life, communication is needed. Yeah. And so it's important to be honest. So if you are just going, do you know what, love, <laughs> I've been just diagnosed. I can't cope with this equally. Your wife might be petrified or your partner might be petrified. Yeah. So that's really important. And with the LGBT community. You know, it's really important on that side as well, because they might be wearing, well, oh, gosh, I was the receiver or the giver, you know, and all the different sides of that element. So let's talk about it. Yeah. And we can't just presume, actually, with the gay community that they, you know, can change their sexual um, um, habits because that is, it's, you know, it doesn't work like that always. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, they might want to be the receiver. So that's really important to be aware of that as well for any of those gentlemen, you know, because that's as important, you know, because it can totally alter their intimacy. Yeah. So discussion is so, and communication is so important. Um, allow their partner to ask anything as well, rather than shutting their partners down all the time. You know, look for other means of communication. If it's something you prefer to write, write. You know, um, discussing needs and desires as well is really important because we all presume everybody else knows what to expect. And sometimes we have to actually spell it out. Yeah. yeah. Not read each other's minds, can they? Yeah. No. And sometimes you think somebody's, oh, they must know I, that's what I'm thinking. They have no idea. And it's the simplest of things, you know. And so sometimes you're actually better to say the, more, the most obvious stuff because very often that's the issue. Um, and so being open to what sexual, sexual activities you, you can also explore. This might be a time to go, do you know what? Let's have a whole new life. And that's where Joe Devine's site can come in. You know, who's- Do you um, explain about Joe Devine's site? Yeah, so Joe Devine is a nurse who ha is a nurse, um, pr previously was a nurse who had um, a lot of pelvic pains and different things in her own life. And then herself and her husband set up this sex toy company but it's, it's a very professional sex toy company and even more professional that she really looks at the medical side but tries to make it fun. And so she's a huge inter interest in cancer patients, menopause, early menopause, um, any painful sex, anything at all. And so she has everything. And so I always say to anybody, you know, who is unsure, they want to have a look at something new and something kinky or anything like that in a non-lurid, but not a kind of a nice professional way. Her site is amazing. Um, she's loads of different blogs. Um, if you can't find anything, she's equally fantastic to speak with and to have a chat with. She is so knowledgeable. She does loads of presenting. Um, and so I send so many people her way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she's a really, really um, important resource, I think, for us all. And I think we should have more like her out there talking. 
um, and she, you know, she'll talk about all the different things, but equally, her other big thing is, it's, you're never too old, <laughs> you know, and we're all going to live longer, aren't we? We're all going to survive more from cancer and we're all going to live longer. So it's really important that we get this, you know, subject and thank you for bringing it up, but we need to bring that even up more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we will put Joe Devine's link in the yeah. description as well. We're going to have lots of links in this YouTube. Discussion. I know, yes. <laughs> but Debbie and I, we like to give as much information out as possible, and we're very collaborative, and it's nice to bring all of the resources together so that you guys that are watching have got as much available to you as possible that's really important um okay so debbie where would you like to take it from here is there so, anything else you want to add yeah so um if i just go back to so in it, it something i missed out so just worry you know worries about sex you aren't going to have you're not going to damage anything okay um, it's safe to have sex, it's safe to masturbate if you're having injections, implants or whatever. Obviously, they say, I think is the cutoff line, is it four hours that, you know, if somebody is using um, uh, devices and, and the erection hasn't gone down within four hours, you do need to go to um, uh, uh, in, uh, an emergency department. Um, but I think it's less than one in 100 men have that issue. Um, uh with with kind of the device and that so you know it doesn't happen too often so just be aware that's the only one but other than that you can't cause any damage um it doesn't affect your treatment okay so when you're just on the hormone therapy it doesn't affect your treatment um i am i would have to check but i'm not 100 percent. i can't remember offhand but i know if um if uh you're L the lgbt community and you had radiotherapy obviously you shouldn't have um intercourse for a while you know you shouldn't have intercourse for a few weeks but i can't remember the exact time frame they can um, check with their yeah. health professional can't they yeah and ask your health professional about it you know so that's the only kind of time where i'd say but i'm talking more you know not having an, and kind of just having the hormone therapy um mm. you know you're not going to cause any problem you know um i think obviously consensual <laughs> you know, that you're happy and not just doing it for somebody else either. I think they're the, the biggest psychological damage for yourself, you know, that you're happy and you want to do this. Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest thing, you know, to be, uh, to be careful with. Um, and the only other thing is that with regards to the intimacy, um, once again, not just penetration. Um, and so exploring all those non-coital sexual practices, which Joe Devine can tell you about masturbation, mutual genital touching, oral sex, like there's so many other things. It doesn't all have to be penetration. And you can go back, you know, have the simple things, kissing, cuddling, and um, massage, just spending time together. Yeah. yeah? Um, and talking to each other. And sometimes if you're finding it difficult, go out for a walk where you don't have to look at each other. And you're also in another kind of doing another activity. It's much less intense than sitting down over candlelit dinner to have that conversation. Um, but it's really good to make sure you get talking and the communication um, it comes down to that with everything. But obviously, you both have to be happy of what you want to do and supporting each other. Oh, you've been amazing, Debbie. I'm sure that after our session, you'll be thinking, oh, but you know what? I really want to say this and I really want I to say that. I always do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm sure we could talk for hours. Um, I think the... The, where are your go-tos if people need to get additional advice? There's Joe Devine, there's um, Macmillan, Prostate UK, yes. Yeah, you have this amazing book and Gogs Gannon. So this is his very good book. Um, and he is um, a prostate cancer survivor. Um, and he does a lot on, uh, I think he's on Instagram, because I think he just asked to follow me on Instagram. So he's on Instagram and he's definitely on Twitter, but he's really, really good. Um, um, our mutual uh, love, Craig Allingham. <laughs> and he actually has a new updated version of the prostate recovery map. And Craig is amazing. He's a physio, um, an amazing physio who went down the road of doing, um, of getting involved with prostate patients. Um, and then there is also um, Venita Gaglani. I can never pronounce her name. She wrote this book for life after prostatectomy. And so that can be something that will help. Um, but yeah, I think the most important thing is can keep lines of communication open, um, either speak to a professional and finding, hopefully there it's, it's getting such a more spoken about topic 
that hopefully there's somebody in your area. Um, and if you really then are really struggling, take away all the physical stuff that you're really struggling with the psychological, then I definitely would recommend chatting with the psychosexual counselor if it hasn't, if nothing else has helped. Wonderful. And I'll give you those links. And they will also be in the description. So Debbie, I want to say a big thank you for your time for your time, giving up your time um, for our, our mutual love of ensuring people do get resources. So thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to doing the next video with you, which will be about pelvic floors. Um, so um, yeah. we, we will all look forward to that one. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Louise. Bye. Bye, my gorgeous. Bye-bye.